What's going on guys, this is Rob, and if you're enjoying the content here on my channel, then make sure you hit the like button, and make sure you hit subscribe so you can help decide what direction the content on my channel goes in, in the foreseeable future. Okay, so getting back into our whole DC Rebirth discussion, uh, we pick up with Green Arrow. And again, this coverage of Green Arrow and a lot of these earlier stories, well, they did happen a while ago. This is really designed to just kind of flesh out our DC Rebirth playlist so that people kind of get a mixed bag of all the different things that are out there. And we're doing it chronologically. Is that way, you know, we could kind of go through and we could say, okay, here's a wide array of different things. And it's also in chronological order. So you see what characters were doing and what other characters are doing and what teams were doing, all leading up to some of the big stories like Dark Knight's Metal and, you know, Superman Reborn and different things like that. But when we did our first video on Green Arrow, we really began to have this conversation about the nature of Oliver Queen. And the cool thing about Oliver is that in a lot of ways, he's not designed to be like Bruce Wayne. In Green Arrow comics, he's totally different from what you see in the TV show. And that's one of the reasons why the reception to the TV show was largely mixed, you know, when it came to the personality of, of Oliver Queen. In terms of the show, it did have a season, I think it was season three, where it was just kind of like, and it did not do very well. <laughs> I actually quit the show because of that for a while. And uh, now it's bounced back. I just finished season four, I think it was, or season five. Uh, whichever one had Prometheus, and that was so good. But we talked about in the first video how there was an organization called the Ninth Circle. And because of the fact that it was the first story arc following the Green Arrow Rebirth one shot, which is to say DC coming out and saying, here's where everything stands with Oliver Queen and Green Arrow. That story largely dealt with like two or three things. The first thing was a group called the Ninth Circle. And the Ninth Circle was really nothing more than just a group of super powerful and wealthy people people who wore masks to keep their identities hidden, and they operated behind the scenes. And I mean, they were involved in everything, drug smuggling, trading of people, and so on and so forth, all kinds of things that went on into that. And the idea of Oliver Queen was to find a way to take him down. And that was really about it. Now, it also went into the introduction of a sister that he didn't know he had and different things along those lines, which of course will probably be fleshed out later on down the line. But the big thing to take away from this, really the biggest sticking point when it came to the beginning of Green Arrow Rebirth with the first story arc, was the introduction of a relationship between Oliver Queen and Black Canary. Now, at the end of that story, the end of the last video, you know, we really kind of just dealt with the idea that the ship had been blown up, you know, and everything had kind of gone awry. And, you know, we ended up having Oliver Queen just kind of landing back on the same island he was on before, where he basically learned and honed the skills that he's gained that have made him such a formidable archer and combatant. And so again, this really kind of follows that in the sense that he's basically dealing with giant cybernetic bears. <laughs> Benjamin Percy, man, uh, you, you confuse me at times. <laughs> You're an amazing writer, but you confuse me at times. <laughs> the fact remains, you know, Oliver kind of dealing with this whole thing, this is exactly what Green Arrow is about. It's designed to be just fun. It's not designed to be like Batman. It's not designed to be dark and brooding. This is the comic you read when you just want to have a good time. Now, of course, the other half of this is that he is largely absent from Black Canary at the moment. Now, of course, that's rectified almost immediately. She basically shows up on shore. She's like, oh, I promise I'm not a mirage. I promise I'm not like the best looking mirage ever. I am actually here. Let's do it. <laughs> Let's jump in the water, get naked and do what makes us happy. <laughs> but the other thing to keep in mind about this is that in the early days, when New 52 first launched, when DC basically wanted you to treat Green Arrow like they'd never published him before, there was a lot of backlash to the early stories because people who were fans of Oliver Queen recognized that there was kind of a other half of him that was missing in the form of Black Canary. Now, the goal of DC with regards to Dinah was to largely flesh her character out. Let's put her in a circumstance where we can basically focus on her as opposed to focus on her as like a sidekick slash wife of Oliver Queen. And it kind of worked to a degree. I mean, you know, for those people who were fans of Birds of Prey, they really enjoyed it. But for people who are fans of Green Arrow, it was like, look, this isn't how it's supposed to be. They're supposed to be together. And there's a long history of that. There were huge moments. There were some very big moments. Longbow Hunters by Mike Grell, the Vertigo run of Green Arrow by Mike Grell. All those things dealt with like these huge moments in the relationship between the two. You know, the birth of Connor Hawk and the eventual death of Connor Hawk. I mean, all these things went into like developing their characters as fundamental people. It made the relationship stronger and then it actually ended up shattering the relationship later on down the line. But there were great things that went, you know, went into the development of these two. In fact, there was actually a point in the publication history of Green Arrow where he was getting with the mom and the daughter at the same time. <laughs> it's actually kind of messed up. But again, that's that's the basis behind this. Now, the other part of this comes with the character of John Diggle. Now, John Diggle really made his appearance in 2013. And I want to say it was Green Arrow issue number 24. It was during the Jeff Lemire and Andrea Sorrentino run of Green Arrow, which by the way, is amazing. It is so good. We might go back and cover that one day. Now, John Diggle being rolled into the comic books, that was simply just kind of an appeal to the show. And that was 
one of the big things that really polarizes audiences when it comes to comics. I mean, in this instance, he runs into these giant bears just like everybody else. The difference is that instead of him overcoming the bears like Oliver Queen did, he's ultimately captured by some woman with like a really screwed up looking face and uh, one of those ninth circle uh, coins in her eyes. Basically, those individuals who are brought into the ninth circle have the entire side of their face scarred and then they have a coin thrown in their eye. And it really just kind of signifies their allegiance to the group. But the other half of this is also remember Oliver Queen's more or less been ousted from his own company. You know, Broderick has really kind of gone out for him and, and that whole thing. So again, there are some themes that are going on, but because of the fact that this is like a two issue story and it's really just kind of focuses on Black Canary and, and Green Arrow in isolation, we're largely going to emphasize that. With, with Oliver Queen and Black Canary spending time with each other. This is cool. This is actually a really, really cool moment between these two characters because, again, when New 52 first started, they never met. They were never together. They were never in a relationship. And again, because of the fact that there was so much history before New 52 started, there was a lot of disappointment there, and a lot of people wanted to see that. This is designed to kind of bring that back. They weren't together before, but they're together now. So it's, you know, it's better to have it now than not have it at all. And it works for most Green Arrow fans. I mean, it's it, it comes together really, really well. And in truth, it's actually pretty interesting because what this does is it, it doesn't really retread water. I mean, it retreads water insofar as Oliver Queen and Black Canary are together, but it doesn't really retread water in the sense of the story arcs. If you're picking up Green Arrow for the very first time, or if you've been reading Green Arrow for years leading up to the launch of New 52, what you get is basically, hey, they're back together again, but you kind of get like a story of like when they're meeting for the first time, things like that. For Green Arrow Black Canary fans, this is what New 52 should have been when it first kicked off. But of course, you know, with regards to John Diggle and the fact that they come across his campfire, this leads to them kind of leaping into action and saying, okay, so Diggle here too and then jumping into it now into this the discussion of john diggle and this is pretty cool because john diggle was originally of course as we know part of the tv show he was never originally part of dc comics it was never that way instead him being rolled into the comics was an extension of the show and again that's why i said that's kind of polarizing is because when it comes to introducing characters fans don't really want to be duped like hey check out this character who just happens to be in the tv show wouldn't you really like him if he was in the comics you know and so the result was that reception of john diggle was not initially huge now it, it got to be pretty cool you know just because of the fact that his character was fleshed out and it was it was really really interesting the way it was done of course you know having green arrow and having black canary try to track down john diggle also results in them coming across what looks like an inuit which is pretty interesting you know some guy who's just kind of living in the mountains and, and off doing his own thing now of course with the, the three of them working together and also because of the fact that they broke the leg of this guy <laughs> you know this of course leads to his bunker and we end up finding out he's the one that's got all these cybernetic bears and things like that running around but the cool thing about this is that this is not designed to be some great big huge thing right it's not like benjamin percy's like oh man there's a survivor of the ninth circle and now they have to fight a thousand soldiers it's nothing like that this is a two issue story arc it's largely a filler comic to be honest and all this really does is hit on the idea that there is this married couple this man and this woman were effectively together and they ended up going two different ways but the reason for that was because in her mind the only way to really begin to expand their you know island culture and their their tribe and so on was to become a bigger part of the world and originally oliver queen's father had actually approached her wanting to, to set up some sort of transatlantic uh you know train system and then following that they were met by the by the ninth circle and said look your island is out in the middle of nowhere we can run drugs people the whole nine yards through this transit system and no one will be able to find us they, they won't know where we're going it'll just head off to one location and it's the easiest way to get things anywhere in the world the result is that uh where the husband basically walked away and said no we don't need to have any involvement with that she went along with it and so what this did is it created a rift of sorts it basically put these characters in a situation where they were looking at the the idea of their entire circumstance for two from two different perspectives and this is designed to mirror the black canary oliver queen relationship again because of the fact that their marriage eventually came crashing down and really went to pieces this is designed to basically say that there is such a thing in relationships called irreconcilable differences not only that this does have act uh, you know after effects for like the recklessness of oliver queen and that's kind of the cool thing about this is ollie is in a lot of ways just kind of out there doing his thing and sure his comics are kind of jokey but the thing to keep in mind is that at the end of the day he is a superhero People look at, you know, look to him for protection, for the means to defend themselves, or at the very least, to show them a better way. And where he shows up here alongside Black Canary and alongside John Diggle, and they literally start, like, attacking everything, you know, and, and just, you know, kind of blowing everything up, the result is that it basically leads to, like, the destruction of this whole facility. And the problem with this is that the couple actually turns directly on Oliver Queen and Black Canary. Kind of like, you guys took away our ability to choose, you guys took away our ability to decide what direction we end up going in. That's the significance of all this 
is because initially they could kind of you know reconcile their differences and try to find a way that works try to fix everything and so on and so forth get their tribe sort of back on track especially considering the ninth circle's been destroyed so there's really no one kind of lingering in the background pulling the strings making sure they do what it is that they're supposed to do the other half of this is that it also again kind of brings this idea together that there is always room to basically fix things there is always the ability to make things right the way that they're supposed to be and so again this really is kind of like benjamin percy hitting back on the nose of the old stories with black canary green arrow the times that their marriage worked the times it came crashing down all that kind of stuff and basically throwing into sharp relief this idea that there will be trials and tribulations they'll come to points where they feel like it's just not working but ultimately they kind of have to pull it back together and, and make it happen so again it is a filler issue there's not a whole lot to go on here you know it's just kind of a story where some things happen and then they're done and they're like well let's go to seattle and then that's it now again all this is really kind of like a journey thing queen industries taken over by broderick the whole idea of oliver is to get back and basically take his company back you know i mean that's that's really all this is is just kind of following this journey leading up to like that final destination but along the way we get these small little tidbits here and there you know we get these small little moments green arrow and, and these guys kind of you know dealing with various conflicts and making mistakes and screwing up and all that kind of good stuff you know trying to get the relationship between the three of them to work and all those interesting intriguing things but with that being said guys we're going to bring this video to an end if you are new here to comics explained make sure you guys hit the sub button to become part of the rob core if you guys enjoy this video make sure you drop a like and i will catch you all later peace